Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Hi, Angela. Hi, Adana. Hi, Destiny and Erica. I don't see your audio. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Okay. Angela, if you could pray for us this morning, if you can pray for us for, you know, salvation to come to our homes, just so to be saved, that would be great. Um, Angela, if, you, if you're able to pray this, this morning. You're very low. I can't hear you. Uh, there you go. I, I can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. Um, Heavenly Father, um, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for um, another day. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity for us to come together and um, praise, worship, and learn. And um, thank you, Lord. Or <clears throat> thank you, Lord, for um, thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. In the name um, of Jesus. Um, thank you, Lord, for um, um, thank you, Lord, for the salvation. That you bestowed upon us, Lord. Um, Jesus. Father God, I pray that you, um, thank you, Jesus. Please, um, please, the, please the blood of Jesus over every household, Father God, that um, everyone, that everyone um, realize that the salvation that you um, give us is free and that um, and Father God, that um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't concentrate this morning. So, um, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord, we touch and agree. In the name of Jesus, salvation, amen. Sometimes it's, it's just one sentence, Lord, save the lost. And so we touch and agree that salvation is in the homes and those we come into contact with, that they will see Christ in us. I touch and agree with that prayer this morning in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to lift up, um, we want to pray Psalm 121 this morning, Lord, over everybody who is on here and their families as well. In the name of Jesus, Father, your word says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And so, Father God, right now, I lift up all of us to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I cover all of us with the blood of Jesus. Father, please forgive us of all of our sins. Lord, wash us inside out. Father, cleanse us of all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now that you will help each and every one of us, our spouses, our children, our relatives, our neighbors, our co-workers, our business partners, Father, our, our government, the nations, Father God, help us, oh God, to open our eyes, open our eyes, Father God, Father, remove the scales from our eyes, give us eagle's eye, eyesight, Father, eagle's vision to be able to see, Father God, I pray dear God that our eyes will look to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus on this day, we pray 
praying for our children. We're praying for our spouses. Lord, we're praying for ourselves that we will look to the hills, Father, not to our situations, not to people, not around us, but we will look up, Father God, in the name of Jesus because our help is coming from you, Lord. And so, Father God, today we're going to make, Father God, a conscious decision and effort to look to you, to lift up our eyes unto the hills of the Most High God, Mount Zion, Father God, that we will look to you when we're feeling different emotions and we're going through different situations on this day, Father God, we're going to keep our eyes on you, the author and finisher of our faith. Father, we will not look around us and be distracted. Father God, we're going to put on the blinders on our eyes, spiritual blinders, Father God, heaven's blinders to keep us focused. Like Father God, they put on the horses, oh God, so that we will not look around us, oh God, and be confused, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will help us to understand that all of our help is coming from you, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we will lift up our eyes, oh God, unto the hills from whence cometh our help, Father God. You said, come boldly to your throne of grace and mercy because there's help for us in the time of need. And so whatever the need is, Father, I thank you that today as we look to you, you are meeting every need, Father. You said, seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and all that we need, Father. Every help will be, Father God, you will help us, oh God. Every need will be met, Lord. And so, Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus, Father. You said you will supply all of our needs, Father, our spiritual needs, the needs of our souls, our minds, our will and emotions, Father God. You're going to meet the physical needs in our bodies, Father God. You're meeting the needs, oh God, in the marriage, in our spouses, in our children, in our finances. You are meeting, Father, every need, Father God. You said no good thing will you withhold from us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, because we know that all of our help is coming from you, Lord, Father God, I thank you that we are obedient to lift up our eyes, Father God, from that place of depression and oppression and, and defeat and fear, oh God, and look up to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ, with Christ Jesus. We're, Father God, we are far above the things that we're looking around and seeing, Father God. We are far above our problems, Father. We are far above principalities and all wickedness. We are elevated, Father God. We're in the third heavens. We pray from that position. We pray from that posture. We pray from that perception. We pray from that perspective, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Our help is coming from you, Father God, the maker of heaven and earth. Father, you created us and no good thing will you withhold from those who love you, Father God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will never perish, but have eternal life. All of our help is coming from you, Father God. You sent your son, oh God, to give us John 10, 10. Father, he came that we will have life and have life more abundantly. And so today I decree and I declare that everybody who's listening to me and our households and our, and our tribes, Father God, you're showing us what it means to have life and have life more abundantly. And so Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, you said you will not suffer our foot to be moved because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, Father God. We have on the gospel shoes of peace and you're leading and guiding us, oh God, into all truth. Father, we're walking down the path of righteousness. You will not suffer our foot to be moved, Father God. You are our keeper. You're watching over us. You're guarding us and our children and our spouse. Father, I thank you that you're guarding us. You're not sleeping. You are watching over us. You're leading us, oh God, in the way that we should go today in the name of Jesus. We will not be confused, Father. You're speaking to us. You're leading us. You are guiding us, Father God. You that keep it is Israel, Father. You, you don't sleep. You don't slumber, Father. You see our children. You see our sons and daughters. You see our government. You see your ministers, Father. You see the church, oh God. And you are preparing, Father, a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You are providing. You are Yahweh Jireh. You're the God who see us, oh God, and you will provide a ram in the bush for us today. Whatever the need is, Father, the, the spiritual need, the physical need, Father God, you are healing those who are being attacked in their mind. Father, I thank you for healing, oh God, the mind, the, the emotion, Father God, the will. You're restoring the souls of our husbands. You're restoring the souls of, our, of the wives. You're restoring our souls, Father God, that have been fragmented, that have been cracked open, Father God. You're restoring the years, the 
the palm of arms ate up. You're restoring our souls, oh God. You're leading us down the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, you're leading us to green pastures. You are lifting up those who are depressed and oppressed from low to bar, that place of no pasture. Father, and you are feeding us your word and you're, up, you're building us up, oh God, because you are our builder, Father God. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is our keeper. We are kept. We are protected. We are not abandoned, Lord. I thank you that we are inscribing the palm of your hand, oh God, and you promise never to leave us nor forsake us, oh God, and so we can stand still today, Father God, knowing that you're going to work it out for us. The sun cannot touch us. The moon cannot touch us, oh God. The sun shall not smite us by day. Those wicked things cannot smite us today. We are protected. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We are protected. Our marriages protected. Our children protected. Our ministries protected. Our businesses protected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The sun shall not smite us by day, nor the moon by night. Those big big father God things that you've created father God the, those natural things the sun is big father the moon all of that is so big that's you said they can't even touch us oh God because we're protected oh God and you made the sun the moon and everything father you're in control like you told Job you are in control of everything and so father we have nothing to worry about you will preserve us keep us safe from all evil the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil the Lord shall preserve your families from all evil in the name of Jesus. He shall preserve that soul. The enemy has been attacking people's souls. People have been going through mental turmoil, but the Lord is preserving your soul. The Lord is preserving your soul in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Your mind is restored. Your mind is renewed. Hallelujah. Your emotions right now, they bow at the foot of the cross. Your emotions are, are, are healed. No more emotional problems. No more mental problems. No more confusion with your will. Hallelujah. Father God, we give our souls to you in the name of Jesus. Soak our souls Father, with the blood, the enemy cannot have the souls of our families. No longer is he manipulating their minds, will, and emotions. We soak their souls in the blood of Jesus. They're led by your spirit, Father God. They, Father, fill them up with the Holy Ghost so that their spirit can influence, oh God, their soul. And with their soul is going to influence their bodies because their soul is their personality. We want the personality of the Holy Ghost. Help us, oh God, to operate in the fruit of the spirit today. Help the husbands to operate in the fruit of the spirit today. Help our children, our nation, Father God, the body of Christ. Help me, oh God, to operate in the fruit of the spirit, oh God. Help me, Father God, to be led by your spirit, your spirit of peace, oh God. Father, rain down your shalom peace on everyone who's listening this morning in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that you're showing us the way to go. You shall preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. Lord, I thank you for your zeal. You are excited to bless us today. Hallelujah, Father. We are your children, a royal priest of the holy nation, Lord. And I'm asking, oh God, that you will save everybody, Father God, that's connected to us, that's connected to us, oh God, that they will see Christ in us, Lord, and that they will surrender completely to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father God, help us to, to not be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Father God, help us. Help us to allow you to fix up our inside, oh God, so that we can know how to operate in holiness on the outside. Help us, Father God, not to be whitewashed tombs. Help us to have life, truly have your spirit on the inside of us, resurrection power. Help us, oh God, to have your power and not a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Help us, oh God, to walk uprightly before you with integrity. Help us to be obedient, Father God. Help us to be humble in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about the wayward spouses, the wayward children, Father, the, the backsliding Christian. I pray, Father God, that you will speak to them today and that they will come back to you in, in, in full surrender, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they will come back to you in complete obedience, Father God, that they will understand that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God through Jesus Christ is eternal life. Oh God, I thank you that we have eternal life in the name of Jesus. Open the eyes of the blind, open the ears, oh God, of the deaf, open their hearts, oh God. I ask, Father, that today you will lead all the 
wayward Jonas, all the Jonas, all the prodigals, Father God, all the saints who are just double-minded, all of us who are with our issues, Father, lead us into your surgery room and the recovery room, oh God, and help us to be restored back to our original purposes based on the volume of the book that's written about us, Father God. There's a whole book written about us, oh God, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that, you, Father, you sent us here. Father, Father God, we are your ambassadors. Father God, I thank you that we are the head and not the tail above only, never beneath that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed in the volume of the book that's written about us, Father God. We have life and have life more abundantly, Father God. Lord, I thank you, oh God, that in the, in the book, it says we are blessed in the city, blessed in the fields, blessed when we come, blessed when we go in the volume of the book that's written about us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made a royal priest to the holy nation, Father God. We belong to you. You have called us up out of darkness into your marvelous light in the volume of the book that's written about us, Father God. We belong to you. We have the victory, Father God, and we will spend eternity with you if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. I cover this prayer with the blood and there will be no backlash or retaliation, Father God. I cover the families in the blood. Father, I thank you. I thank you for miracle signs and wonders raining down, Father, upon every family, Lord. We touch and agree. Father, you said wherever two or three are gathered in your name, touching and agreeing, you are there and you will do it, Father God. We abandon religion and we step into a relationship with you, Father God. Father, we're, uh, we're going to obey Psalm 121 and Psalm 91. Father, we are dwelling, living in your presence. We have a relationship with you. For, Father God, you said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Father God, I thank you for Psalm 91. That's our birthright this morning as well in the name of Jesus. And we have the victory according to Psalm 60. Psalm 60, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we win. Hallelujah. And all things are working together for our good in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, you are repairing everything that's broken this morning. Hallelujah. I see repair broken. You are repairing what has been broken, what has been damaged. And so I release Isaiah 61 over all of us. Father God, you are repairing the breaches, anything that was broken down. Father, I thank you for the Nehemiah anointing that's released right now. You are rebuilding the broken down, down walls, the broken down families, the broken down souls and spirits and bodies, Father God. You are repairing right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are rebuilding Jerusalem. Father God, you're restoring peace back into our lives, into our homes, into our families, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we don't, we're not intimidated by things that have been damaged. Father, you said you restore, you repair, you renew the years, the palm of worms ate up. Father, you said, behold, I do a new thing. And so, Lord, we expect, we expect the new in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise your name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. This morning, June 27th, 2021, day 318, Lord, we've been together on this platform, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers, Lord. Father, I thank you for your glory going all around the nations. Lord, I thank you for revival in all parts of the world, Father, upon the seven continents and the five oceans, oh God, we thank you for your revival that's taken place in the name of Jesus. And so Father God, help us to worship you, Father, on this day, no matter what is happening. Help us to have a posture, Father. Help us to have the, the attitude of worship. Father God, you said you're looking for the true worshipers. They that will worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God, those who have a relationship with you, not religion, but a relationship with you. And so, Lord, I thank you and I praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we praise your name. In the name of Jesus. Powerful. We will not be satisfied, Father God, until we have more of you. In the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. And so, Father God, this morning, <clears throat> we have on the whole armor. Father God, and our minds are renewed in the name of Jesus. Anybody who was going through any type of attacks or whatever, Father, I thank you that, that the anointing is here, Father, to destroy every yoke of bondage. And I thank you, Father God, that you're healing those who need healing. You're helping the families who are represented on here today in the name of Jesus, because we know this is all spiritual. And so Lord, you're fighting for us. And so we're standing still. We're standing still, Lord. And we, we just thank you for the victory. We are armored up. Our minds have been renewed. You, you prayed, Father God, for us. Father, you gave us the, the music. And we know, Father God, music is something about music. Your, your Holy Spirit even sings over us. And so we thank you, oh God, for just a fresh anointing that has been poured out on every prayer warrior who's on here and their household as well. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. And our faith is being built up this morning. Perhaps some of us went through some tough times last night, yesterday, even this morning, while trying to come on the, the prayer call. Maybe you were going through some different things, but right now we are refocused. And we're going to add to our faith all throughout the day. We're going to add love, mutual affection, godliness, perseverance, self-control, knowledge, and goodness. And the promise is that we will increase. We will be productive. We will be effective. We'll have our, our sight. We'll be able to see. And so we can look to the hills from whence coming our help. Our help is coming from the Lord. And so once we have these qualities inside of us, we're able to see clearly, we're able to understand, and we will be productive in the name of Jesus. No longer in Lodabar, that place of no pasture, but we will stay fruitful because God said, be fruitful and multiply and walk in power, walk in dominion, walk in authority. So gone are those days when we felt like we were victims. We're not victim, victims, we're victorious. We are powerful in the Lord because God is the one who's doing it through us because we have emptied ourselves out and we have made ourselves available to the most high God. And so we're growing in the name of Jesus. We are effective. We're seeing good changes in our lives for the glory of God. Amen. All right, so let's continue on. So starting with Tiffany Flowers. Yesterday, throughout the day, I learned Yesterday, um, good morning, by the way. Um, we had lots of storms here um, yesterday, and um, tornadoes are not really common, <coughs> excuse me, common in the city. And there were, <clears throat> there were multiple tornado warnings and flash floods and, and such and and you know we're monitoring the storm to make sure because it's not like the city's really equipped or used to dealing with tornadoes mm -hmm. and um and like the girls were like i don't know why you're not afraid like because I was trying to explain it to them, you know, and I grew up, I grew up there's, it's tornado region. So uh, tornado warnings and seeing tornadoes and all of that is, is kind of familiar. Um, so I wasn't afraid, but um, I, I, I looked at it as, I mean, there's, there's nothing we can do about the storms. The storms are gonna come. But if we, you know, stay confident and we know that we use like the tools that we've experienced before, then we'll be okay. Amen. And yeah, the the warnings were on and the sirens were going in until like midnight. So I was obviously asleep by then, but I was comforted enough to go to sleep, you know, and not to be concerned. So. That's what I learned. Amen. That's powerful. <laughs> there might be storms, but as long as God is with me in the storm, I'm good. I'm going to go to sleep. 
Yeah. Wasn't Jesus sleeping on the boat? Doing mm-hmm. the boat. Yeah. 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 Like peace. And, and that and 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 tornadoes are known for its destruction. So it wasn't just like a rainstorm that happened to bring destruction. Yeah. It was like a storm that come and there was multiple ones. And then there was the flash flood warnings and the rivers are overflowing. I was like, this is awfully prophetic. <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't moved. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't nervous. But you know, the lights and the Wi-Fi and all that, you know, had its issues and anyways yes. stand firm that's what i learned stand firm no matter what the storm amen thank you tiffany you're welcome all right let's see who's next destiny yesterday throughout the day i learned good morning yesterday throughout the day i learned <clears throat> lean not to our own understanding even though things may look crazy, you know, we have no idea what's going on, why is this happening to me. Lean not to our own understanding and trust in the Lord our God, because he's intentional. He has a plan and a purpose for every situation. Mm. I like that. He's intentional. Girl, amen. God is not surprised by anything, right? He's in control. And so we thank God for that. Thank you, Miss Destiny. All right. So let's continue. So this is this is the um the last well maybe it'll be the last day for this video. Who knows? Okay, this might be a part of what we need to be doing, anyways, because the Pharisees, Jesus is going to describe them as being whitewashed tombs, honey. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be described as that. Okay, and that's because they were wicked. Our God is the God of the living, right? Not the God of the dead. And so clearly, you know, the Pharisees were not of God, right? And Jesus already said, woe unto them. They're, they're not righteous, but they look righteous, whatever that looks like, right? They have on these fancy clothes and they say some of the right things, but their, their, their hearts were demonic, evil. And so, but when we come to God that way, right? God is like, if you surrender, I can change you. But they, they didn't want to change. They thought they were in control. They thought that they were God and setting up all these rules for the people to follow that the rules that they weren't going to follow, but they put the burdens on the people and robbed the people of their money and stuff like that. They were just like greedy and just all about self-indulgence, right? But God is calling us to surrender, right? And so even though we come to God and stuff is dead, as long as we lift up holy hands to God and say, Lord, you know, have your way, Lord, save me. We're gonna we're gonna receive new life, and that's sad. That life was walking among the Pharisees. Jesus, right? He's life. They couldn't recognize it. They 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 loved death so much. To them, death was everything. Death looked good, you know, and so so much so that Jesus had to describe them as being whitewashed tombs, with the dead people's bones inside of them. Evil. That's, that's the devil. Those are the devil's children. And so we, we're like, no, Lord, Lord, help me. Give me life and have, give me life more abundantly, Father God, based on John 10, 10. In the name of Jesus. And John 10, 10 keeps on repeating. I open my journal, take my notes, and the scripture is John 10, 10. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you will have life and have life more abundantly. And I'm like, Lord, show me what that means today. I know we say these things, right? But I'm like, Lord, show me what that looks like. Because I need visuals, right? And, I, and he's going to start to show us. What does that mean? And so we can discern when we're walking in life or not. Because some days you're like, wait a minute, what is this? We, we need to, we, we got to ask ourselves, is this the life that God would have me to live? You know, is this God? Or is it my flesh or is it the enemy? Because if it's your flesh and if it's your, if it's the enemy, it's going to produce death. And so we don't want that. We want godly fruitfulness. We want God's will to be done. And so we want God's Holy Spirit. And so we thank God for the Ezekiel's who are hearing God's voice and they're going out there and they're speaking life. I think even Viva means life, V-I-V. And it comes from the word, revival comes from that too. God wants to revive 
He's, he said, I've come to seek and to save the lost. Amen. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, oh sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the voice of the Lord. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound and the bones came together. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to his breath and say to his come, the four winds of breath, breathe into me slain. So I prophesied at him. A vast army. Mm, powerful. Thank you, Father God. All right, so the hand of the wait. Lord was look, look at that. It wants to play by itself. You're not gonna play right now. <laughs> All right. So yesterday we we're talking about um the the Pharisees, right? The, the religious leaders, and Jesus kept on calling them hypocrites. That's a word that we, we don't want to to be used to describe ourselves, right? It's it's such a ugh, bad word. God doesn't want us to be hypocrites. So it says. Um, for you, you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income. So, you know, all that stuff. They're doing all these fake acts, but they don't care about justice, mercy, or faith. And, you know, without faith, you can't please God. God is God of mercy. And if we're made in God's image, we're supposed to have mercy. And God is a God of justice, right? And you see that from Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Right. And so Jesus called them blind, blind guides. Now, how are you trying to lead people, but you're blind? Right. These are the ones who will strain their water so that they don't swallow a gnat, but they'll swallow that camel. Hypocrites. And so Jesus said what sorrow awaits them. They're the ones who will. And we don't want we, we want to make sure that we're not like that because it's easy to slip into this. It's, it, I don't know why I think it's because of the enemy fights us and you know when, when you're dealing with spiritual things sometimes you, you sometimes you can miss the mark sometimes you'll be off and when we when we when we catch ourselves we gotta like pull back and repent so just check to make sure that you're not being religious because God is not calling us like we said to religion he's calling us to a relationship so his spirit is constantly teaching us speaking to us leading us into all truth and the holy spirit is on the inside of us so it's easy let me just say that one time it's easy for you to slip over to the wrong side thinking that you're doing god's will but you're just being religious so it's like lord show me am i being religious right and god will show us because the religious people they 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 just start getting like some people get fanatical they become fanatical about it so just make sure that you have sound mind, that you're really flowing in the spirit and not in acts, works of the flesh and just a whole bunch of foolishness. Don't do that. So these people, they're careful to clean the outside of the cup, right? That's the outside of the cup or the dish, right? But the inside is filthy. So they sh they'll show you, like I have a form of, you know, holiness and righteousness. I look clean on the outside, but on the inside, they refuse to allow the Lord to perform surgery. So they're filthy within, filled up with greed, self-indulgence, and all the works of the flesh that's mentioned in the book of Galatians chapter five, right? So you have the fruit of the spirit, right? You have, you have those walking in the, in, the, um, in the Holy Ghost and those walking in the flesh. And so Jesus said, you blind Pharisees, first wash the inside of the cup and, and the dish, right? And then the outside 
will become clean too. Very simple. Very simple. But the problem is they want to be God. They want to be in control. So they don't care about the inside of the cup, right? They're going to clean the outside so people can see that part and think that there's such and such and deceive the people around them. But time out for that. Time out for that. It's time to say, God, I'm dirty on the inside. Some, there's some days you're dirty or that you're dirty when it comes to certain things, right? And you're like, Lord, I need to be clean because you're not going to dwell in, a, in an unclean temple. And so let's watch this video really quickly so we can get a visual. In today's video, we're taking a look at how to remove stains from your coffee mug, easy and simple. It's so simple, anyone could do it. Everything that we use on the video, we're going to leave a link on the description of the video. So you woke up today wanting some coffee or tea and you get yourself a mug and start looking at it and say to yourself, it's looking like it's time to get a new mug. Don't worry, here at the Static Box team, we've got your back. We're going to leave that coffee mug like new. And these are the things that you're going to need to become a hero. You're going to need baking soda and a sponge with an abrasive side. Or how we like to call it here in the starter box team, the green side. And you're going to need water. And ideally, clean water. Now, we're going to get a small container and add two tablespoons of baking soda. Now, we can add one tablespoon of water and you're ready to mix. And basically what we wanna do is create a paste. This mixture is gonna whoop those stains away. And this amount is good for two cups. If you're only doing one cup, then you wanna use half. If doing more, then you wanna multiply. Now that we got a finger workout, we can go ahead to a full arm workout. Now we're ready to start scrubbing the mugs. And you are gonna start noticing that the baking soda paste is gonna start removing and lifting the stain away. And you're gonna notice that the baking soda paste is also gonna turn the same color as the stain. Once you notice that your cup goes back to the original color, then you can stop scrubbing. Now you're ready to take those mugs to the jacuzzi or to the pool. We can take the mugs and rinse them away in water. And now you can pat yourself in the back for a job well done. You have leveled up to a human stain remover. With each video that you watch, you just get stronger and stronger. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone in the status box team or someone in. Okay, so let's see who's gonna break this down spiritually. Uh, uh, Erica, are you available to talk, Erica, this morning? Where is Erica? If Erica cannot respond, Adana, are you able to respond? What did you see spiritually? Good morning. Good morning. See, not spiritually, it's like um, being with sin. You know, we have sin and once we apply the word of God, you know, um, regularly, it is going to overflow and eventually we are going to be made new once more. Amen. So I see. I've seen it like um I don't know if you ever saw the video with the with the um the water, the dirty water. Mm -hmm. Right? And once you continue repoing clean water in it, it is going to continually the dirty water is actually going to continue to overflow and the clean water is actually going to um overtake the dirty water. Mm -hmm. And I think um I think it have a scripture with that in the Bible as well. Right, where the river, you know, where the river was dirty. Oh no. I think I, I think one of my sisters on the platform had a dream. Yes, like, um, yeah. Bianca, yes. yes. Ezekiel yes. forty seven. Yes, yes, yes. So that's how I see it spiritually. Mm, thank you. Anything yes, else? Uh, mm, not at the moment. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. How about you, Angela? What, what did you see? What, what was the Holy Spirit showing you as the man was talking about the baking soda, the abrasive sponge, the water, the container, and all that stuff? What, what did you see, Angela? I'm seeing me. 
You say you saw you? Yes. yes, asking God to cleanse me, my heart, my mind, inside out. Mm -hmm. Because I can ask, you know, when I go in prayer and I can ask for what I need or what I'm going through at the moment. But that's just the surface stuff. Mm -hmm. And I need, I need a deep down cleansing. Mm. Inside out. Um, so, you know, um, in order to sparkle and burn with fire, <laughs> I, yeah, I need, I need that deep cleansing going on. Mm -hmm. Some surgery. Remove all the stains, all the impurities. You know, and Yeah, I need some of that baking soda. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of us. I, I like how you was able to just call it out. That is all of us, honey. For real, for real. <laughs> Lord, scrub me out. <laughs> deep cleaning. <laughs> deep cleaning. I don't need that little wipe down. I need to be scrubbed. Right? You yes. saw, you notice how you were scrubbing that cup. And I like mm -hmm. how you said you need that abrasive sponge. Some people trying to trying to get clean, right? With the soft part. Of the sponge, mm -hmm. nah, honey. Mm -hmm. You you got some dirty stuff on you. You need mm -hmm. that abrasive, um, green the green part, and and that's when God be correcting us, Angela. You're like, oh, ouch, mm -hmm. a scrub it, it scrub it, right, and then dip us in the water of the word, so that we can be Ooh, clean, yeah. like like mm -hmm. like Naaman. Remember Naaman? He mm -hmm. had leprosy, mm -hmm. and the oh, prophet yeah, told yeah. him, mm hmm. But the what did the prophet tell him to do with his with, with his leprous self? He uh, said, go, I don't remember. Yeah, he said, go dip in the Jordan water seven times and you're going to be clean. And so we can think of the water as the word of God. You want to get clean? Go read that Bible and apply it. <laughs> right? It's going to scrub you. It's going to wash you and you won't mm -hmm. be the same. You will not be the same again. Oh, is that why you tell us to read the scripture seven times? <laughs> <laughs> For real, you read that seven times, you're like, ooh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, you're not gonna be the same. There's no way you can read the word of God and practice because you don't get it mm -hmm. right, Angela, right? You're not gonna get it right the first time, the second time, right? You gotta mm -hmm. practice, you practice it with the Holy Spirit and you get better and better. Mm -hmm. Okay, better and better in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus. Anything else, Angela? No, that's all. Okay, all right. Chin, you can hear us now, Chin? You said you couldn't, you didn't have any sound. Are you able to hear us now? I'm not sure if you can hear us. All right, Tiffany, what's the final final um, feedback for this video, um, Tiffany, before we go on? Um, that we have to speak life into those things that we um, believe in. And we gotta speak the word um, and the word of the Lord is all powerful. Mm -hmm. um and we have to apply it it's not just what we 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 know or like it's not just what we learn like we know that baking soda cleanses and it scrubs but we also have to actually use it mm -hmm. you know it's one thing to get a, a stain or something you're like oh no this ruined my table i'm just making it up tablecloth yeah. and you're sitting there going oh and you're using soap or you're using water or you're just like you know i'm just gonna throw the whole thing away you never applied the baking soda mm. and you didn't okay. scrub it and you didn't do it but you just go throw the whole thing away no you know the baking soda can do it so try it yes amen and so, apply it so. did you notice the cups that he can fix anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, come on now. If, 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 mm -hmm. that, if that didn't speak, that by itself spoke. It says he can fix anything because yesterday Doug was talking about fit, building some technology that he um, that he bought and he, he taught us a whole lesson with that. And so, yeah, God can fix anything. I like how you said, Tiffany, you know the baking soda is going to work. Go use the baking soda. Some people, Tiffany, they try to skip over certain steps. Mm -hmm. I told you, go pray and fast. You're skipping over stuff. God said, love your neighbor as you love yourself and love me first and foremost, right? So mm -hmm. we got to follow the steps. And 
God always gives you a strategy. He mm-hmm. always gives you a formula. It's, it's, it's the word, right? But he's going to show you how to use it, right? We have the Bible. Everybody has the Bible. God's going to show you how, to, which, which um, strategy to use. So you, saw, you saw the man said, bacon soda, the brace of sponge and some water, get you a container. Mm-hmm. You got to follow the steps that the Lord has given to you and then scrub, right? The same thing he told Isaiah. He said, go and tell um, King Hezekiah. So prophet Isaiah went to King um, Hezekiah and Hezekiah was sick and getting ready to die. And God said, get a pace, tell him to get a pace, a fig pace Mm -hmm. and put it on the boil and it's going to go away. So God is going to give you instruction. So that's why every day pray attention. What is it that the the Holy Spirit is going to deposit in you? What is he depositing in you for you to get out of whatever situation that you're in, for you to get better, for you to be productive? He's speaking, but are we listening? He's giving you step by step and it's easy. You see how it says, how to remove coffee stains from mug, easy, simple. Cause he said, my burdens are what? Easy. What is it? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And it's light. Mm-hmm. So God's not going to give you 50 steps. Number one, when we see the 50 um, steps, Tiffany, what, what will you do most likely if, if God gave you a step of 50 things or a hundred? Start at the top. I'm be confused. Yeah, so I was at least start with one. I yeah. start, I mean, let me start at the top then. I don't even know where to start. So I'll start. Right, you get to five and yeah. you're like, I don't, I don't remember what. <laughs> so he give it to us simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Right, all your mind, all your mm-hmm. strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's gonna, that's gonna fulfill the whole commandment. All my commandments will be fulfilled if you do that one thing. You're like, oh, okay. Versus a hundred things that you must follow. It's, it, that's why Jesus came. The people in the Old Testament couldn't follow all those steps. So Jesus came and mm. said, boom, all you got to do now is believe. Now, what's your, what's your excuse? All you got to do is believe in me. And I give you everything. I think I, I, think I believe in Jesus and, yeah. and receive everything. <laughs> Anything you else know, different? Yes, it's very, this is interesting. When this came on, I chuckled. Because I have like this, I think it's five pounds, six pound bag of baking soda. And my sister, I got, you know, I get it from Costco. And my sister-in-law was like, why do you, why do you need all that baking soda? And I was like, I use it for everything. And she's like, what are you talking about? She's like, what, what do you, how could you use what? And I was like, I put it in my laundry um, to help brighten the clothes, to bring out stains. I use it as a paste to bring out stains and clothes. I clean out the dish or the sink with it. Um, I clean, I mean, I use it for all sorts of things. I put it in water to soak. You know, it's, it's, uh, um, it cleanses, you know, like, a, like Epsom salt. Um, I use it for my teeth. Like I use it for everything. She's like, well, I guess you do need a five pound bag of, of baking soda <laughs> for all that. <laughs> you know, five is grace. So you already know. Yeah, it, I was. It's five. I thought it was six, but maybe it is five. Yeah, but it's it's a big old bag. Listen, we'll, we'll call it five. We'll call it grace. <laughs> we'll, yep. we'll subtract that one. We can make it five. <laughs> wow, I'm about to go buy me some baking soda now. Talking to you, Tiffany, use it for everything. It do. Wow, that, and isn't that the word of God though? You can use it for everything. Yep, I used it. it like when the girls like we we were potty training them, and you know they had accidents to the bed. And you just pour it on it and it soaks up all the urine. And then you just, it's like a, like a brick, like a, not a brick, but like a, like a barrier or something. No, it's like, a, it, it, it dries up. So it turns into like a disc. So you just pick it up and it's soaked up all the urine. Ooh, you know, you're like scrub, and then scrub it and scrub it and scrub it. It gets, you know, the, the urine out. But if you just pour the baking soda on it, like a bunch and just leave it, it'll straw up all the urine. And then you just pick it up like. A little disc like girl. patty yeah. and it's yellow it's gross and but but it's gonna know, clean it up. it all up yep and it soaks up the smell you put it in the refrigerator to get you know the smoke up soak up any smells deodorizer mm. it's everywhere <laughs> oh th- thank you for, for saying that because that's the soul prophetic as well you know, and you always said that go and go, go in the word of God and find out what it is that you need to be doing. And there's a scripture for everything. Yes. 
And yeah. one scripture may apply for multiple things. Mm -hmm. Cover that whole list of a hundred. Doing yep. that one those, thing. <laughs> yep. And those religious people are, you know, they'll say to you, oh yeah, you can take the Bible. Of course, people say, you know, the Bible, go to the Bible and people just flip the Bible and, and turn it into whatever they want. That's how he designed it. Because it can have multiple meetings. Mm -hmm. As long as, as, long long as you take it, as long as you don't take it out of context, you're good. Out of context, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, John 10, 10 can be used in a, bo a bunch of different scenarios. Mm -hmm. It just may not be for when somebody comes to steal something from you. Come on it, now. It's, it's scripture that you can use to, you know, defend the enemy, to understand the enemy, to be able to identify the enemy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I can go on. You and and, and we're robbed different ways. So you already know that it's applicable to every different thing, all different things, you know? Mm -hmm. Powerful. Yes. Thank you, Tiffany. All right, um, Chin, are you on here still? It says that Chin has left the meeting. Let me see. Chin, can you hear us? Yep, yeah, I'm here. All um, right, great. my audio, my audio was giving me problems, so I had to get out and then come back. So go, go, go ahead. What's your response about the, the baking soda and the Word of God? Just like you said, the baking soda can be used for a myriad of things. A whole lot of stuff for cleaning, for drinking. Uh, um, um, when grandmother taught me that. When, when if you're eating an orange and it's really sour or a grapefruit, you can just tip a little bit of baking soda on top of it. Here, you would not know that that thing is sour. Serious? So, you put on something that's yeah. sour? Yes. Whoa, Doug, you hear this? I'm about to give you some baking soda. Yes, we use it for cleaning the shower. We use it for everything over here, child. So, anyway, yes. This is just a whole like word, in, right? Yes. <laughs> we got to go to the store right after this and get some baking soda for real. See, that's why it's good to come together and fellowship. You learn some stuff. Yes, we use it. We use it for everything, everything. Um, when the kids are having their um uh, uh their detox bath, that I use it with the I use baking soda mixed with the, the Epsom salt and the um uh, peroxide, and we give them a bath. The next day girl, they're better. What? <laughs> Girl, I'm about to mix the Epsom salt and the, listen, and the baking soda. Watch, we're going to be detox over here too. Yeah, Thank with you. the perex, with the perex out and you can drop your little essential oils in there and all of that. And when you come out, you're going to be dried out. You're going to need moisturizer for your skin. Wow. Hydro so the hydrogen um, peroxide and, and mix that with the Epsom. And throw it in your bathtub with your and your your Epsom salt with your baking soda, your hydrogen peroxide. You mix all of that together. You go in there with your essential oils, your little candles, whatever you want to do, and you go there. You soak for a little bit. You come out feeling clean like you've been scrubbed since last year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so God is talking about detox. I'm I'm telling you. Yesterday I saw something at the at the um the smoothie place Doug took me to, and it said detox. This is go. really good. Lord, I thank you. There you go. So yes, in reference to the word of the Lord, we can, we we should be able to live on the word of God for everything that we need. There is a scripture for everything that we are going through in our lives. And um, it, I wouldn't want to compare it to baking soda, but that's the, the closest thing. And that's what we are on. So yes. 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 Leaning on God's word for everything. Wow. So when you were talking, Chin, I... I thought about um, Psalm 1, where it says, um, when you meditate upon the word of God day and night, you shall be like a tree that's planted by the, planted by the rivers of water. Yes. yes. So, so when you're soaking and, in the word, it's going to detox you. That's why you're going to be able yes. to, bro, I'm done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't got me a whole revelation. That's what you just said. That is powerful. When, so when you're meditating, it's going to detox you, you know, it's going to take out that stuff out of you so that God yes. can put the good stuff back in you, the, the, you know, his will. Because he told us, he said, meditate on me day and night. That's all he asks. And if we're meditating on God day and night, what we don't have time to think about negative stuff or anything mm. that, you know, and sometimes it comes, you push back with the word of God, mm -hmm. detox with the word of God. Yes. yes. Girl, I like this detox with the word of God. <laughs> and, and the same word that detox you is the same word that's going to uh, refill you. Build you up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Woo. Girl, you don't, you don't, you don't taught a sermon <laughs> right with that right there. <laughs> For real. That blessed me. That blessed me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Chin, before we go on? Um, 
Uh, no, I was just here making um, earrings because one of our family members, remember um, Kelly said she wanted to um, um, sell earrings to help the less fortunate. And so we've been doing that. 100% of what she makes goes to someone who is suffering or is less Hi. fortunate. And so I was just here sitting down making earrings. And as soon as the word comes to me, I just write it down in my little book. And then I, you know, I, that, I, so I'm multitasking. I'm doing earrings. I'm writing down my thoughts and I'm here, you know, in our meeting, our prior meeting. Powerful. So she's like eight years old making jewelry for the less fortunate. Yes, yeah, so now I'm making a set because um, Maria's aunt, she had an accident. She scrippled from her neck down, just like our babysitter, remember her? Wow. And so, yeah, she's asking for help. So I'm here making a set of earrings so I can ship them off so I can send the money to her. Because okay. she need a whole lot of stuff. Um, she isn't doing very well at all. So I'm, I'm going to contribute to what whatever project that is that, you, that you're talking about. So, um, yeah, so that's that's yeah. what I'm doing. All right. Thank, Thank you. No Thank problem. You so wow, that was right. deep. That was deep. And then to have a child, eight, Kelly is eight years, eight years old, right? Yeah, she and she's been doing this since she was six. Wow. Mm. Uh, making jewelry. <laughs> you know, I love jewelry. And then and then the earrings is so prophetic because it's like God is like he who has an ear, let him hear. Yeah. So I just thank God. And, 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 and that's what God does when he detox us and clean us up. It's like Ezekiel 16. He began to redress us, beautify us yes. with salvation. So boom, everything is just yeah. making sense. Thank you. Um, yeah. Ken. Yes, you're welcome. Wow. De Miss Destiny. Go ahead. Um, Miss Destiny, are you able to respond this morning? I am. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was thinking when I saw that it brought to me about, um, the stains was in the cup because it wasn't because somebody poured coffee or tea in at one time, two times, three times. It was over a period of time that the stain got so bad that the person noticed, wow, this cup is just completely stained. I need to clean it. So as life, as we go through life, it's not because we hurt one time, two times, three times. It's because over a period of time, life stains us mm. it's over a period of time that we go through our ups and downs and life happens to us that we need the word and sometimes people say it don't take all that or it take all that plus some mm. because we have been stained from the trials of life so we need the word of god to <clears throat> so we need the word of god to watch us and to scrub us because it's been pain over a period of time. Mm. And, and things that sit over a period of time is how we become damaged because it sits and it festers and it grows. That's what so I mean. was like, wow, yeah, those things didn't come overnight. Those things that come from uh, using that cup a few times, it was over and over and over and over and over. And sometimes, you know how you look at something and you only realize it's dirty and dull. It's been some time and you're like, dang, yeah. look at all this dust. I need to dust. I must have had dust in a while because this thing, dust is kind of thick. Because over time, things sneak up on us. Yes. And you don't even realize it's happening until the stains have set. And take a good scrub of the word of God to get it out of us. So Destiny, is that why God said we're supposed to read the word of God daily so that we, we can be scrubbed daily and not let it pile up? Amen. And that's Girl. why he says he renews our strength each morning because he knows that the trials of life that we go through, like you was praying earlier, you was like anything we've been through last night or this morning, you know, because, you know, he knew that each day we were going to need his strength. We can't live off yesterday's word. That's why we, like you said, we're supposed to read the word daily defeat our our spirit because he knows things happen day by day things unexpectedly happen things that catches us off guard so we have to hide the word of the lord in our hearts so you never know when you're gonna need to pull that thing out wow this that was good that was good thank you miss destiny i agree with that so I'm thinking every morning we come on here and every time we go in the word of God, every time that we fellowship, you know, anything we do for God is that we're going through our detox and, and, and refill. 
you know, our cleansing and the, our purging and just being being made clean and being restored. So that's why every day we have to do it. Don't wait until like every month or whatever. Meditate on the word of God daily. So, so from now on, when I think about that scripture, I'm going to think about chin. Just like that detox, you know, when you're reading the word of God. And I'm going to think about this destiny where you got you got to do this thing every day because if not, all the um, mess of life is going to pile up on you and, and you're going to be dirty. And you, So to, to stay clean, you got to do this consistently every minute throughout the day. Get in your word. Meditate on that one scripture or whatever it is. I'm going to think about what Tiffany says. God's word is all purpose. You know, the all purpose cleaning. That's what God word, God's word is. What It's like the all purpose vitamin. You know, the, 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 the vitamin you take covers everything. That's what God, God's word is powerful and and angela listen here god is cleaning us up amen god is cleaning us up and i like how angela was like it's me we're not pointing to mama to the husband to the spouse the children no lord i need for you to do this for me and i like that response angela because it's like you're like i'm available lord you have something to give to me that's gonna make me better it's me I'm, I'm making the, the, the phone call to the doctor's office. I need, I need an appointment. It's not my children who need the appointment. You know, sometimes you got to cover stuff up. No, it's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And so your, your, your transparency, Angela, that's everything. And that's what God is looking for. Just be honest. Come as you are and I'll, and I'll hook you up. All right. So the Holy Spirit has spoke so much from this one slide. Oh my goodness. I'm just like blown away. And so knowing all of that, right? Knowing all of that, we can see how this is different from the Pharisees. Now, we saw this video yesterday, right? How the man was picking up all these rocks and putting it in his book bag. You know, that's what religion does. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. So when you start feeling heavy all the time, you're picking up some religious stuff that you need to shed so that you can soar like the eagle. This was everything that we saw yesterday. Religion is not going to Listen, if you got a whole bunch of bricks, a whole bunch of rocks, you can't even mount up on wings as eagles. You're too heavy. So God is saying, lay aside every burden, religious burden too. That's the thing about it. It looks good. Religious acts, but it's killing you. It's staining you, making you dirty on the inside. And so travel light. Even today, follow that one commandment, love. Don't be adding anything else onto yourself and stressing yourself out. Okay, so that was yesterday's video. So let's keep on going. Now, when you go to Matthew 23, we're just going to go through it. Basically, we already said all of this, but we're going to read it really quickly. And then that's it. We're finished. It said, what sorrows await you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Hypocrites. For you are like whitewashed tombs. So I guess they get the lime. What is it called? Like the lime, um, the lime powder. And they wash the, the graves. So they can look extra bright so that you can see. Sometimes you can look at the grave, the grave and remember, don't be like this person, or just to remember the dead. Like, listen, God is doing a new thing. We shouldn't be scrubbing no tombs anyway. Like, I just feel like that's yes, we respect the dead. But what Jesus is saying is you're focusing on dead things. We're supposed to focus on life. So they're over here scrubbing the, to the tombs, making them white, but their inside is still dirty. You see how we these people are twisted. Does, it doesn't make sense. It says the graves are beautiful on the outside, but you know, and this, this is this is what God is describing. Jesus is describing them. So the Pharisees are being described. Look at this simile. This simile is everything to show you how dead and wicked they are. It says, for you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. They need that whole detox and of the word. They're dead. They are the graves. They are the tombs, right? Jesus is like, you're nothing. You're evil. Outwardly, you look, you look like righteous people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. And so we're like, Lord, is this me? Father God, help me clean my heart. Give me the heart of, um, of flesh. Give me your heart. Father God, help me to not pick up the heart of the Pharisees. Father, I don't want any lawlessness in my heart because when 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 you break the um the 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 the, the laws of God, sin. The Bible says sin is lawlessness, and if you don't have the fruit of the spirit, you have no law. That's what Galatians says. 
And so these people, their hearts have all, all kinds of hypocrisy, lawlessness, bones, death, destruction. God is not in this. John 10, 10 is not here. And what's so sad is they're described as religious leaders, teachers of religious law, but they're wicked. That's why we have to have discernment of spirits to make sure that the people that we're looking at, you know, ask God to show you their spirit. And when God, God's going to show you who people really are, he's going to show you what's in their hearts. And after, in a matter of time, you start seeing the true self begin to emerge. And so Jesus said, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build tombs for the prophets, your ancestors killed, and you decorate the monuments of the godly people, your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would never have joined them in killing the prophets. But in saying that, you testify against yourselves that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started. You snakes, sons of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of hell? And so one person, she was talking about, oh, you know, this, there was a minister, she just posted something about, you know, you're not supposed to um, preach angry and stuff like that. No, you're not supposed to preach angry in your flesh. But I'm gonna tell you, there's righteous anger that you're supposed to preach against that wickedness. And if, 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 if you're like Jeremiah, you're gonna bring it. Jesus went into the temple and threw over the tables. You see the wickedness in the church, Jesus called him, and, and John the Baptist did too, you snakes, sons of vipers. He called them all the way out. See, the problem with, with the church today and just society, people don't want to tell the truth. And when you start telling the truth, they're like, oh, you angry, you're bitter. No, because I don't even care about this topic. It's the Lord that placed it in my belly to speak against it, to renounce it. Right. And so they will attack you for preaching the truth with any kind of passion. Oh, you're not saying that in the food of the spirit. Jesus didn't call these people snakes and sons of vipers. Tiffany, does this sound nice to you? Tiffany Flowers, snakes. He called them snakes, sons of vipers, and flipped the table in the temple. Does that, Tiffany, where's Tiffany at? Is she on here? Does that sound yes, so cute, cute and nice to you? No. Call you a snake and the sons of vipers. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a little bit. But that's exactly what I thought of when you said that is I was like, no, Jesus was in there flipping tables. He's like, this is out of order. Mm -hmm. There's a point where you have to, there's a point where you have to speak and speak it into, and, and speak it into existence and speak it so that people know, because, you know, just like, what did he say? You un, um, uncircumcised Philistines. Yep. That isn't nice. <laughs> Come on, David. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to chop off your head. Oh, come on. How do we become saved? And at the end, we try to, oh, we got to talk like this. And yes, you love. You're saying it in love. So we're not saying, you know, you're going to say evil things. No, you're mm -hmm. speaking against the wickedness, not, not judging, not condemning the people per se, but condemning their sins, right? They like, yes. no, but right here, Jesus said, you, you call them sons of vipers. He's, he's condemning them. He didn't Amen. say your spirit. He's, and John the Baptist did the same thing. And David called out Goliath just like that. And so we're going to, for us though, we know we're calling out sin. Like we're not even going to like attack the person because it's spiritual. We know that, right? But if they don't change, guess, guess what? They're going to die and go to hell. And people don't want to hear that part either. If you don't repent, they're going to go to hell. They'll, they'll stone you, even people in the church, because they're religious. What is it? Teachers of religious laws. They're the Pharisees. People just don't want you to preach the Bible, period. Oh, we can do whatever we want. God loves us. It's okay. We can be dirty and stained. He still loves us. He said, come as you are and stay that way. No. And that's what's wrong with the church right now. We have to be able to take a stand for righteousness and say, listen, we need to detox. We need to fast and pray, y'all, to get. And that's what fasting does, I think. Right, Tiffany? You're the health, health person. Don't fast and detox you with something like help you to get your body to get back in perfect alignment, Tiffany. I know that you Cleanse. are into the health stuff, right? Uh-huh. It cleanses. It cleanses you, um, detoxes you, um, and then helps you to get your your um, pH back in balance, your 
your electrolytes and such back in balance and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Come on now. So that means God's word is basically, like you said, everything in one is everything you need. Because he's saying fast and pray. You're fasting and praying and your spiritual man is getting built up and your soul and your body. Everything is, is being built up and God is giving you a whole deliverance. Wow, powerful. So, so Jesus is calling them out, y'all. He said, how will you escape the judgment of hell? You're going to hell. Therefore, I'm sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law. And it says, but you will kill some by crucifixion and you will flog others with whips in your synagogues, chasing them from city to city. Now, look at that. They're supposed to be the, the godly ones. And then God is sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of the of religious law. And look what they're doing to them. They're going to kill them. They're going to kill Jesus. They're going to flog the believers, right? Chase them all over the place. And it says, as a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all godly people of all time. From the murder of righteous Abel to the murder of Zechariah, son of Berechiah whom you killed in the temple between the sanctuary and the altar. These people come to kill y'all, steal and to destroy. And Satan is the one that's behind, behind the, the scene, the puppet master. So Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. Amen. And that's all we're going to read today. It's like, speaks for itself, speaks for itself. And so let's, let's see who learned something. We call on two people and then we're done, y'all. That was it. Okay, Angela, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you this morning? What, what, what are you walking away with this morning? Sorry, I was talking oh. with the mute on. <laughs> <laughs> um, present my best self un, un, um, altered. Like, um, I remember um, there have been some people that I've known in my in the past where there when you see them and they're always presented well, dressed nice, smell nice, and everything. But um, I can recall a couple that did not have a habit of um, they weren't very clean. Mm. And so I always wondered how do you how do you not clean up before you step out, you know? And so that just um um keeps my eyes open, you know, to like have a spirit of discernment. And um not for the, you know, just the outwardness, but like at somewhere, um, somewhere that should like um, roll over into into the light. Like there's some kind of giveaway, you know. There's some kind of you know spirit there that lets you know that this person is not quite you know where they need to be or where they you know probably should be, and um, just always you know close my you know close myself and you know continue to ask for um ask God to cleanse me you know and keep me keep my mind on where I need to be and in, in my walk you know my daily walk not on the rules level but on you know you know I know where I want to be you know, within a in a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so I have to walk in it and stay clean, you know, you know, kind of I guess keep myself clean and and watch how I'm living and presenting myself spiritually and physically. Mm. I hope that makes sense. That makes perfect <laughs> sense. Girl, yes. Yes, keep clean. Keep yourself clean. Don't don't let anything contaminate you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I, I did a prayer book, and I said, no, I think it's no more con contamination. And and and, I, and there was one person in the Bible, 
he he sinned sinned against God and because he was with the whole Israelite army and the whole Israelite the people his sin what he did caused everybody else to suffer that one sin you know what I'm saying it affected everybody and so sometimes we're thinking oh you know God I understand I can just get away with this no it's going to affect somebody else mm-hmm. just, we have to be clean because we're part of one body and that's the thing mm-hmm. about it. People don't, they, they, they got to think but beyond themselves. It's not just me. It's not just Angela. It's the body of Christ in its totality. And, and what you do is going to affect the whole body. It might not look like it, but it will. You notice how people look at the church, like, like the church is nothing. They've lost respect for the church. Why? Because of those ones who just were hypocrites and treated people nasty, you know, mm-hmm. where a lot, a lot of people don't want to go to church because of that. And so now God is raising up a people, like Jesus said, I'm sending some new people. I'm sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of, the, of religious law. I'm sending my people right out there to try to make things right, to be a good example to the world. So that when they think of church, they're not thinking about the pain, but when they think of the church, they think about love. They should know us by our love for each other. Amen. So I agree with you, um, Angela. You got to be right. Anything else? Um, no, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you, Miss Destiny? What's the Holy Spirit showing you today? She might not be able to respond. So we'll get one more. All right. Adana, are you able to respond? What is the Holy Spirit showing you, Adana? And finally, let's see if Tiffany, what's the Holy Spirit showing you? And then you could close out with the um, altar call and the, the bad addiction, Tiffany. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, let's see. That was that was a a, um, a loaded a loaded little nugget today. Listen, um, in one slide, one. Slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what I um, learned from today is that um, 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 I'll try to make it a nugget too. Um, Sometimes it's the little things or the things that we don't think that we kind of overlook sometimes that are the most powerful. It's kind of like how you always say we have to pray attention um, and be still, right? be, be slow to speak and quick to listen. Like they sound so simple, but you get so much from those simple things. Yes. And even in like, like even at the fruit of the spirit, like people, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna assume what people think, but it seems like such a simple thing, like be kind, love, have peace. You know, they seem like simple things, but they're so powerful. And the difference is, is that you have to apply it. If you never apply it, you may never experience the power in it. Like the, like a baking soda. Like if you don't get the baking soda, scrub it on the stain, you're never going to know that it's going to come out. Like sometimes you have to do things and you're like, I don't even think this is going to work, but they said to do it. So I'm going to try it. Right. (laughs) Um, or just like Chin said that, you know, bacon soda is used for indigestion and it's also used for like upset stomachs, right? So you're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a spoonful of that, or I'm not drinking that many water, but you do it and it actually works. Mm. And so, you know, I, that, I got that from today. And then I also got that, um, because of how some things are small, but they're so powerful. You have to trust the power in it. For instance, like Jesus was meek, you know, not meek in, in presence, right? Like, um, you know, just very soft and, and just kind of interacted, I guess, with the people like calm and peaceful 
But when it was time for him to get with them, mm-hmm. he got with them. And it was obviously powerful, right? And so anyway, that's what that's what I think that I'm I, I gather from today is that you know the small things, the small gestures, the small um kind of like um, a humble beginnings again. I just felt that a little bit. Um, those things kind of produce bigger, powerful results. Yes. Wow. The little things. Mm. Amen. Small oh, acts, look, yeah. small actions, small things are bigger and more powerful sometimes than the big performance acts, you know, like the bigger things. And so anyway, that's, mm-hmm. like that's small what I was, things, right? Like, like saying hi mm-hmm. to somebody and being kind, small things yes. every day, right? Yes. Not, not wait until you have a spotlight on you, not, not wait until you go onto the platform, like the Pharisees, but no, every day you're treating people with small acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. And like, um, for instance, like you say, you know, we have to pray fast and so. That doesn't mean that you do have to do a 40 day dry fast. That doesn't mean that you have to sit and pray for hours and hours and hours on end. That doesn't mean that you have to sow hundreds and thousands of dollars, but just, you know, sowing what you can praying when you, when praying, you know, when you can starting your day with prayer, you've got 24 hours in the day and you can't devote an hour and a half to them to the Lord every day, 10 minutes. Come on now. And, you know, so, so it's like, those types of those types of scenarios like he said that things happen only certain things can happen with fasting and praying Mm -hmm. and sewing that doesn't mean you give the whole kitchen sink that doesn't mean you know that doesn't mean you have to do it all you know i'm not do it all but it doesn't mean that you know you have to drain the bank and um you know, if you have $5, it's $5, but that's showing that you're sowing something. If you have 10 minutes, you pray for 10 minutes. It's showing that you're, you're giving something back. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, if you're going through and you're like, I need to hear God, push away from the table. Don't eat breakfast. Take away a snack. You like do something, sacrifice something mm-hmm. to hear from him. So, Amen. Amen. and so anyway, that's, that's, that's good. I don't know if that's what you wanted to give from that today, but that's, that was stuck out. Um, Isn't that something? Every day I come as a Holy Spirit, it, 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 I, I'm just here to present, right? You mm-hmm. have your way, Holy Spirit, because I don't know, right? I'm just obedient to like put it together and then watch the Holy Spirit just unfold every morning. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's like detox and being refilled every day on repeat mm-hmm. seven days a week. This is a gift. This is the grace of God. You know, cause sometimes the grace run out. You're like, okay, time's, time's up. That's it. You know, it was only for a season, but for 300 and something days, I'm grateful. Cause sometimes we start stuff differently, right? It'd be mm-hmm. like seven days, <laughs> seven days. But this has been almost a year just doing this right here. It's been, it's been a blessing. And you know, what's interesting too about that is that even like teachers, right? Every, everything seems to have like a break though, right? Like Congress goes into caucus or whatever, hiatus, whatever they do, (laughs) um, where they sit down for a minute. You know what I mean? Teachers, you don't teach the whole school year. Um, You know, like hospitals are open 24 hours a day, but that doesn't mean the staff is on call, Mm -hmm. you know, or the staff is actually working. They get to go home. They're on call, but they're not, you know. And so it's interesting that, you know, for 300 and some plus days that this has, you've provided a platform for us to come together for the word. And each and every day he's giving you something brand new. And I think I brought this up a while ago and I, I won't draw this out, but like my, I used to ask my grandmother, like, and I mean, she's gone to church forever. I mean, I, I think when I asked her, she was in her 90s. I don't remember. But I was like, did you ever get tired of hearing the same word over and over again? And she was like, nope, it was brand new. And she was like, she would take her Bible 
you know, every single time as if she hadn't read through those scriptures all those times, all these years. But that's like, that's the beauty of, of, the, of the word, right? It's that it has so many meanings and so much that it's, that's in it, that he's able to apply it or get, provide you like the wisdom to provide it and provide it that isn't that necessary good? times isn't that something because I, I asked God the same question and I, I'm the, I, I've never said this to you but I've said this on the platform right that I said Holy Spirit I'm gonna run out of stuff to say <laughs> it is not true it's not because he gave us so many different ways to present the word is so diverse that you can't run out you saw how we were on just the cup we were on that slide for the most the, most of the time that we were on here Everything mm-hmm. that we needed to hear was said on that one slide about the, the cup, the baking soda, the water, and, mm-hmm. and, and the sponge. So you're never going to run out because it's like the widow with the oil. You keep on pouring, right? And, and, and God's going to give you more oil. Just keep on going. Like you said, by faith. Faith is the size of mustard seed. That's the requirement, right? And then God mm-hmm. every day shows up and helps us. I'm great. Like keep collecting the vessels. Keep collecting yes. the vessels. Oh, that's, yes. I mean, that's a word right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's powerful. That is yes. everything. And so I thank God for that. You know, like I always ask them, you know, just to show me, show me what you want me, how you want me to present it. You know, and then every day, just, just do that. So I thank God. Yes. And, and just the, paying attention and just being aware like I don't that that alone right is just hearing that and and that being reiterated over and over over the you know 300 plus days is praying attention because the Lord will speak to you you know people are like I can't hear from the Lord I don't hear his voice you may not but he may be speaking to you through he said miracle signs and wonders that doesn't necessarily mean it's always a voice it could be you know, an encounter. It could be three license plates in a row that tell a story. It could be you sitting in traffic annoyed that you're going to be late, but there's a a sign, a a, a, uh, advertisement on a car right in front of you that gives an entire confirmation (laughs) of a lesson. You'd be like, wait, slow down. Don't be in a hurry. Yes. (laughs) Like the tree, right? Like we've been talking about trees and I'm sitting behind a truck that has a, a decal that says, Jesus tree removal? <laughs> Come on. And then you saw roots out the highway street or whatever. I'm like, no. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. He yeah. confirmed a whole entire lesson that we had. Like, yes, Tiffany, I know that you hear what I'm saying to you. And I'm showing you that I know that you hear me. Mm-hmm. And I'm showing you that what you just learned is legit. It is true. Yeah. Wow. So key to the word that I just, that you just heard, because it is true. Wow. Wow. And you know, somebody, you remember last summer we fasted in August, 2020? Yes. Oh yes. That long one. Yes. So 40 days, girl. So, we, so it was after that fast, somebody said, somebody said, I don't know what I'm going to do after this. Cause we are meeting every morning and every afternoon. Remember 6 a.m. and six, mm-hmm. oh, 7 and 7, I think it was. Right, mm-hmm. I think it was seven, seven, or six, six, one of them. Yes. So the person said, "I don't know what's gonna happen after after I'm done, after we're done with this," and I and it hit my spirit so hard. In a sense, the person was saying, "Like this is a community that you know is helping me, and when it's over, I don't know, I don't know what's next," you know. Mm-hmm. And that's when the Holy Spirit was like, "I want you to do it." It must have been Holy Spirit because I'm like, "Okay, we're still doing this three hundred days, not three hundred eighteen days," and so I said, "Let's meet every day, every morning." And, and this mm-hmm. Bible study for those who feel like they don't have a place, you know, it's a, it's a place that can come and receive ministry. And so that's what it was about. That was the motivation so that nobody is left out there. It was Corona, you know, Corona and people are lonely. Mm-hmm. And for somebody to say that you're like, pray attention. What if that person fall into some despair, you know, and don't have a place to go. See, if you made it out of Corona, that's God. Because yes. people were attacked on many different levels. You know, some people died. 
right? The virus took them out. Some people lost their job, lost their family, got depressed, mm -hmm. you know, just got overwhelmed. If you are right now in your right mind and still going, that's the state, thank God, because some people, that, that's not their testimony. And so God provided a safe place for people to come for ministry. So I thank God. And it was, it's on Zoom. So we weren't exposed to any virus, right? You, have to, you use your device and get on. So we thank God that he'll, he'll make a way. He'll provide a ram in the bush for you. So yeah, Tiffany. Yep. Thank you, Father God. And more is to come. More is to come. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And then Chin said we need a retreat. She's like the fourth person, third or fourth. Oh my person. goodness. He said. We've been saying that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> By the water, y'all have to be by the water. I love the water. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna let the dog in. Okay. And then we're gonna pray. Okay, there you go. And take on this day. God gonna, God gonna give us so much love and life today. I'm excited, more love, more life. And I just looked up all that rain that happened yesterday that I told you and there's a dandelion growing in the crack of my sidewalk. <laughs> wow. We need that, that that dandelion video again. That was so powerful. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I I'm ready. I can keep going of all the testimonies we have. Okay. Heavenly of Jesus Christ, we thank you for letting us come together this morning. We thank you, Father God, for providing us this opportunity to have a safe place where we can come and experience your word, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity to be able to start our day with you before anything else happens in the day, Father God. We can come together in corporate prayer and come together in fellowship, Father God, and to learn the word and to learn how to apply it, to get testimonies of how your word has been applied and how your, your power has manifested because of it, Father. Father God, we do this, Father God, not just for us, Father God, but for your glory, and we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for giving, for giving Prophet Stacy the, the wisdom to be able to put together these um, these lessons and to be able to teach us through visual aids and not only just visual aids, but being able to organize the conversation so that there's participation from everybody or there's the, you know, we have the Zoom chat so that we can, if we're, if we're not able to speak, you can still communicate, Father God, and that is only you, Lord. That's all you. And so we thank you for giving us this glory, Lord. We, your word says, Father God, that when two or more are gathered in your name, you are there. So Father God, each and every morning, we know that when we join together on this call, that you are there with us. So if there's anybody who's ever lonely or feel that they are lonely at any point, you aren't alone. If you join together in, in fellowship and if you join together with others that are, that are trying to learn, learn the word, you're never alone because Holy Spirit is with you and the Holy Spirit is with you all the time. And so, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for being um, the lamp to our feet to continue to guide us and mark each step that we have as we go through this journey of life, Father God, because without you, Father God, we would be in the world and we know the world is not where we, we need to be. And so, Father God, we thank you for keeping us on the path we thank you for giving, for building a hedge of protection around us, Father God, so that we are able to stay in your word, stay in your, in your um, guidance, and to, to be able to have our eyes and our ears and our hearts open to receive it, Lord. It's one thing to be able to see it, but it's another thing to be able to receive it and apply it. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us that opportunity to be able to do that, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for, for you giving us the, this chance so that your glory can be magnified. Be magnified for those to see, Father God. Be magnified so testimonies after testimonies after testimonies can manifest, Father God, because that is, those are the things that give people hope. Those are the things that show people how to have faith. Because when your when your acts manifest out of your word and out of your promises, there's no way that people can deny it. 
when the, when those miracles happen, Father God, there's no way that people can can deny it. And we and we went to a funeral this weekend, and the apostles said that that Jesus provided his biggest miracles at where a marriage, a, a wedding, and at a funeral. And so, Father God, those are the places where people gather. Those are the places where people come. They either come in celebration or they come in mourning. But, but, but you manifest miracles in both of those places, Father God. And so we thank you. And that just shows that you are the author of life and death. You are the beginning and you are the end, Father God. And so for those who are questioning the word and for those who are don't understand the word, Father God, you, you show us. You show us in miracles and you show us in signs and you show us in wonders, Father God. And so we thank you for allowing it to be presented in bite-sized digestible pieces that are unique and, and, and unique and special to each and every one of us, Father God. And so for that, you get the glory. This isn't for us, Father God, you get the glory. And we thank you for allowing us to be your vessels, to be able to, to um, carry out what it is that you need for the kingdom to learn, Father God, and that's to bring them to you and bring them to salvation and to bring them to an internal life. And so, Father God, today, if there's anybody who's out there that is lost, that feels lonely, that feels as though they're out here in 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 and flailing around, and they, they are, you know, like a, a baby who needs to be swaddled, Father God. Give us to stay, Father God, to speak to them, Father God, so you can be that, that blanket to cover them and to swaddle them and so that they can come to you, Father God, and that they can see, receive that peace, receive that love, receive that kindness and receive that patience so that they know that that's what you put inside of them and they have it with them all along. And so if there's anybody out there who is, who is wayward or who is who feels lost or feels lonely, call on the Lord and he will answer. This is what he longs to do. He longs to be able to hear his child's voice to call on him so that he can hasten his words to perform it. So repeat this prayer with me, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I know that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe Jesus Christ, your son died for my sins. And right now I turn from my sins and I return to you, Lord. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that you, Father God, raised him from the dead, so now I am saved. Thank you for saving me, Father God. Through Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And Father God, we speak numbers 6, 24 through 26. Just as you said, we need to confess with our mouths and speak your words through our mouths, Father God, that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and you're gracious and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And I seal this prayer in the blood and there will be no backlash or retaliation from the enemy. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I touch and agree with that prayer. Benediction. Lord, we thank you for the souls that are being saved right now that were saved. I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Be blessed, victorious ones, and we will do this again in the morning. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. Amen.